Welcome to the Senior Hour, which is sponsored by Providence Holy Cross Medical Center, Hestia Med Spa, and Comfort Keepers in Home Care. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Thomas Pelucky, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM, AM 1220 KHTS. This is a show for, about, and by seniors, giving information to enhance one's quality of life. And... Uh, my co-sponsor is our first guest this morning. Yeah, hi. How are you this afternoon? No, this afternoon. It's not morning anymore, is it? Good morning. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Let's turn the time back. There you go. And, and we, lose that, we lose that hour uh, like a week, right? Yeah, Next I, week something, or something like that. Something like week, that. A week or so, something I, like that. I think this might be the last time. That that happens. I don't think. I think we're going off of that crazy, craziness. I hope so. Finally, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Because you, you you wake up exhausted. Yeah. It messes you up for weeks on either does. side of it. Yeah. The older you get, the worse it gets. Yeah. Yep, yep, <laughs> the more yep. messed up you get. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't take much. No, it does. <laughs> no, I don't need any excuses. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> what we're doing today, right? Yeah, it's another show and tell. Yes. Because you have, uh, yeah, okay, I don't think it's any secret to anybody who's listening right now that you've been a patient of mine for a little bit, and I've helped you through some, uh, sh shall we say, serious health challenges. Yes, 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 absolutely. And um, so today, we're going to, in the first half, we're just for especially for our Facebook viewers, when, when you can see this, it makes a heck of a lot more sense. I'd be like to ask to try to describe for um, anybody listening right now what the heck is going on in the studio. But um, seeing is believing, um, right. and it's hard to, it's hard. Um, you immediately picture something when somebody says the word chiropractic, right? Yes. And it's usually not something too pleasant <laughs> for most people, for 9 out of 10 people right now. And I'm, I'm not kidding. 9 out of 10 people will not consider chiropractic an option for various reasons. But the main one being that it, a lot of people <laughs> don't, don't want to have wrestling moves done on them on a regular basis in order to supposedly cure everything under the sun. That's the reason I came to see you, yeah. because the uh, a couple of chiropractors I went to, and sorry, I don't remember their names right now. Well, that's good. That's <laughs> what happens as you get older, <laughs> remember? <laughs> but I, I used to lie on the bed, and then I'd be twisted and turned yeah. and upside down and right side up, and yeah. and it was very, it was a very frightening. Yeah. Procedure. Because I always sure. felt like I was gonna, I'm gonna fall on the floor. Yeah. You know, and but you do something completely different. Yeah. That has, I I think probably more success. At least it had for me, and I'm sure for all of your clients or your patients who still come to see you. Well, of course I'm biased, but my bias isn't just. Um, oh. I'm, of course, I'm going to say this because I mean, I'm conceited in vain. I, and my bias is because I taught at two chiropractic colleges. Uh, I'm one of 12 advanced instructors in the world. I spend an obscene amount of time in postgraduate certifications and ongoing research. I, I spend twice as much time researching as I do taking care of my patients every single day. So I'm always looking for the new, next, better thing. Mm -hmm. And over the past 30 plus years, I, I discovered this, ooh, um, I discovered this 40 years ago when it literally saved my life. So a quick backstory. It's intriguing. It's good. <laughs> so I, I grew up in a medical f family and my mom would come home from a groom shift at the hospital, literally life and death stuff, all day long. She comes home and has to crawl into bed and lay on a heating pad all night long just so she can get up and get us all off to school and my, my father to work every single day and then go back and do it all over again. And this is on 
lots of medication, um, physical therapy, and after a failed back surgery. She's still miserable for decades, right? Uh, when I woke up one morning and couldn't turn my head, oh, by the way, in 10th grade, I'm, I'm testing for medical school in 10th grade, and I wake up one morning and I can't turn my head. And this was one of the one of the few things that we thought maybe it's okay to go to one of those quack row practors for, <laughs> right? So I, um, you, you go, and the, the guy is way cool. I mean, a very cool dude. And that's usually the case. Like, when you go to a chiropractor, they're typically more charismatic than your traditional medical doctor because they have to work harder. They have to, you know, have something. If it's not a, a, a cure for your problem, it has to be personality. It has to be charisma. And a lot of them, that's all it is, is personality and charisma because they sure aren't fixing anything as far as I can see. And that's where you see all these viral videos come in, these, you know, a thousand views per hour viral videos of people doing what I would never consider allowing being done to myself or anybody I cared about and claiming that this is the best thing there is out there. You know, the, those violent maneuvers, usually on a, a, a bikini model, <laughs> to make sure that they get all the views that they can. But still, it's just, you know, I, I, I don't even know. I, I, I certainly, in teaching at two colleges, we never taught it that way. And um, there's a reason for that. But that being said, a chiropractic, even under those circumstances, is so remarkably safe. And a lot of people believe that it's very dangerous because, unfortunately, there are still some old-school medical doctors out there who will tell their patients that whatever you do, never go to a chiropractor. And there's no basis for that at all. Chiro chiropractic is thousands and thousands of times safer than aspirin. And nobody ever says, whatever you do, don't ever take an aspirin. You know, I mean, it's very true. So you, you look at the numbers, and none of it makes sense. We have the lowest uh, malpractice insurance of any healthcare professional. Uh, we have the highest patient satisfaction for anything um, neck, shoulder, hip, back. Um, people who go to a chiropractor instead of just conventional medicine have a much better satisfaction, a much better outcome. I mean, this is, this is PubMed. I mean, this is, uh, when I say PubMed, this is published research out there. So it's, it's not like, oh, that's your opinion. No. Um, we have more clinical hours, more educational hours, than medical doctors. And people think, oh, chiropractor, would, would you get uh, that in some weekend seminar somewhere? Yeah, you know? A couple of years. Uh, it, it. No, it's, it's real. I mean, we, we, just because we don't do surgery and we don't do drugs, um, which are very dangerous and have a lot of side effects for a whole lot of people out there, mm -hmm. complications and side effects, which we don't have in chiropractic. So the, oh, that all being said, I still won't do that twisting and cracking on anybody because I know better. I mean, I, I, I can get the result that you want without ever having to do that. And today we're going to demonstrate a little bit of that yes. here in the studio. Yes. What, what it could look like and, and how underwhelming the whole process is, especially when you see those viral videos where, you know, the, a girl is being manhandled violently <laughs> with all kinds of noises, and you can see the look on her face like, ah, what? <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. but... Yeah, whatever. And that horrible inside feeling, yeah. oh, I'm going to fall on the floor. Yes, yes. That, so it's not a very pleasant <laughs> feeling. It's not. No, it's not. So, you know, I, I, I've been told by uh, marketing managers, you know, never, never do anything that people don't already know and want because you're wasting your time. I'm like, what? Well, that, that's not real. Because you look at the real innovators. You look at Elon Musk. You look at 
at Bill Gates, you look at Steve Jobs, none of that stuff existed before these guys came along and said, this is what we're going to do, here's how we're going to do it. You know, Elon Musk is my favorite out of the whole group. I mean, yes, I am a, a Mac fan, so I, I like Steve Jobs better than I do Mr. Gates, but you look at Elon Musk and he says, you know what, electric cars, cars, most, I, I, I just went to, um, oh man, I can't remember the name of the place, um, the, uh, so, uh, some museum down in uh, Selmar, uh, great, great museum, it's a car museum, they were uh, cosmetics um, manufacturers, and they started buying all these cars. I, amazing cars, like cars from the the first cars, the first uh, mm -hmm. one of a kind in the world cars, just an amazing experience, and I'm having a senior moment right now, because I can't remember the name of the place, but it's a great experience, and I, I hope that we can do some background and post it on um, the, the description of this show. Um, never cut. The Nethercut, Nethercut oh, Museum. I've heard of it. Amazing. So, uh, where was I going with this? Another scene. <laughs> um, <laughs> plug for the Nethercut. <laughs> there you go. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. So, uh, I was getting to uh, Elon Musk, why I love Elon Musk. So, I got to the Nethercut. And right in the front window, there's a display of this car that's rotating on a circle from 1910. It was an electric car. An electric car in 1910? It was an electric car in 1910. When cars oh. were first started, you know, internal combustion was kind of a new thing. There were steam engine cars. There were steam yes. engine cars for hundreds of years. Know. Marie Antoinette had a steam engine car. Yes, I know. Like, they'd been around for hundreds and hundreds of years in Europe. But yeah, the internal engine. combustion engine kind of turned that whole thing around. And when cars first came to America, we got into the game late. When first cars first came to America, um, you could get internal combustion, but you could also get electric. And only all, in, in, in the 19, late 70s, when the last oil crisis was going on, when the early um, 1980s, electric cars made a run for it, but the technology just wasn't that great. So it was difficult, and there was a lot of pressure from internal combustion, big oil, and the big three car manufacturers didn't want anything to do with it. So they were just these little boutique companies that just got crushed, crushed out of existence, until Elon Musk comes around and says, you know what? Um, it's time. It's time that we do this whole electric car thing. And everybody says, you know, you're going to waste your whole fortune. The, the, uh, the infrastructure is not there. Nobody's going to want these things. And it's like, oh, yeah? And it comes out with that Sportster, that insane Lotus Sportster that's electric. And he, he, he couldn't keep them in stock. Every, everybody, everybody had to have them. And they were costing four and five times what a regular car would cost, but everybody had to have this because he did it right. And then he builds some that more people could afford, and now they're in a very reasonable range. Unfortunately, he made some enemies along the way with certain government <laughs> officials. Um, supposedly, I heard at last, he's coming back to California because they all made up. But um, he was on the duty list for a long time, and they took away all of the um, incentives from buying a Tesla. Like any other electric car, you would get the government incentive rebate thing, but not if you bought a Tesla. So he's had to make nice with some people <laughs> in order to make that work. But anyway, so these people, they don't care whether people know about the situation. They don't care whether people know about what they really need or not. They just do what they do because they believe it. People want it. And they just don't know yet. They don't even know what they don't, you know, they don't know what they don't want. That's true. So, so as far as this is concerned, I understand that people have an idea about chiropractic, but 
I believe that this can change the whole game. I believe that this can help people uh, amazingly with so many different things. And it's not a cure-all. All it does is relieve stress very efficiently, very effectively, very economically. Yes. And when you realize that stress is the underlying cause of every top 10 killer, it's the one thing they all have in common. And when you can get your body to uh, uh, manage stress a little bit more efficiently, a little bit more effectively, and not be tr pre-stressed before anything else like a virus or uh, a toxicity or, or, or bad food choices enter into the picture, but you're not, you're already loose and flexible and without having all these stress chemicals running through your body, you're going to be better off. Yes, makes sense? Absolutely, yes. It and it makes and sense you, for me. And you don't have to be stressed about unstressing. You don't have to be scared about some guy who's going to grab your head and rip it one way, grip it the other way, and then jump on you a couple different well, ways. Well, the, the, the reason that, that you have helped me so much is because since going through this mess that I've been through the last several months, I've been doing a lot of sitting. Mm. And doing a lot of sitting is not good for you. No, no, it's not. And so let's demonstrate what you've done to help me. Sure. Okay, so, so uh, again, uh, much better for the Facebook group, but we're going to try to explain it uh, for the radio. Okay? okay. So can I have, I mean, I have Bob stand up. She's going to turn her back to me. I don't take it personally. <laughs> And, and I got a very mild, um, they're calling them massage guns. I don't like that word, um, but it, that is what it is. So it's not the ones you see on the NFL sidelines. Um, this is a v much more milder one, um, and it, it still uh, helps to know where to put it, how to put it, when to put it. Um, so um, that's what... Barb likes best about coming to me right now. So sitting too much develops a lot of tension in the lowest part of your back where it sinks into the pelvis and your sit bones. And I mean, Barb is just loaded with tension right now. So here's how this works. We just take the massage gun and I'm not putting it directly on a joint because that could be a really bad thing, especially with a powerful one. But e this one, even if I put it right on a joint, it's not going to do any damage. But all I'm doing is finding the most tender spot and then rubbing away from it out from the spine along the top edge of the, the big hip bone and in just like three or four passes I can feel that tension going away. Now this is just a temporary thing but it sure is nice to have that kind of an effect with instead of having to go for an hour long massage. Now some people enjoy that luxury, some people want the whole experience but most people you know, if they can get the result, if they can get the relaxation in 30 seconds instead of 30 minutes, um, most people are going to opt for that. They don't have to get naked. They don't have to clean themselves off of all the oils. And I'm not bad mouth for massage. I think it's a great, great thing out there. But I think this is just a heck of a lot more convenient and it gets, the same, gets to the same place in a fraction of the time. So... Now I'm going to the other side, doing the same thing, finding the most tight spot in the bottom of her back and then rubbing out and away from her spine with this little vibrating, pulsating rubber ball. Barb, how do you feel about that? It's fine. <laughs> It feels good. Yeah. It really does. Now, normally, I do a much more thorough exam to know when and where and how to do all of this. But, like I said, I've been working with Barb now for, I don't know, what is it, 10 years? At least. 
Well, it was, you were especially effective after we had that, after I was in that horrible car wreck. Yeah. And that switch from her low back into her shoulder. Now, she didn't talk about the shoulder, but um, I know that it's a problem, so I'm just going to do this as we go into our break. You're listening to the Senior Hour, KHTS FM 98.1 AM 1220, hometownstation.com. Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Thomas Palaki, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM AM 1220, KHTS. And our guest now for the second half is Adam Laraway of Focus Physical Therapy. How are you, sir? I'm great. How are you doing? Good to have you. I'm Thank fine, you. especially after I just had a, oh, treatment. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, on-air treatment, huh? Yes, an on-air treatment. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, what are we talking about today? Oh, well, we can talk about, uh, you know, with focus, we're really focused on trying to help people out, you know, and helping with their pain, and so uh, we've had some uh, pretty cool success stories lately uh, using our piece of equipment called the Newbie. The um, Newbie, yep. yes. So it's starting to catch on for sure. I was actually just at, uh, at our national physical therapy uh, conference uh, last week, and so I got to meet up with the, the Newbie crew, and uh, so that was a lot of fun to get to kind of see some of the research and stuff that they're doing. There's a lot of research coming out to really back up what our our, our case studies are finding, so that's that's a lot of fun. And I would imagine that it benefits seniors. Absolutely. Tremendous. Absolutely. You know, uh, we use the newbie a lot of different ways. It really just depends on what the person is dealing with, um, but we can use it to kind of cheat the system for strength, which is really kind of cool. Um, I'll toot my own horn a little bit here. So I've always been kind of a, a body type that I could get stronger, but I really never put on muscle mass. And uh, I got a thing for cr Christmas and I had to measure my bicep. And so I have been strength training with the newbie for about a year. And uh, I had measured my biceps last year, and they're two and a half inches bigger than they were last year. <laughs> Cause, and, and that's literally, literally, uh, you know, working out once a week with the newbie, uh, which is pretty amazing. And and again, where I'm, you know, I'm 47 years old, so typically somebody at 47 is not putting on a lot of muscle mass. You're usually losing muscle mass. Um, but because we can use the newbie and the direct current stimulation. Uh, I, I can do all kinds of things. So, you know, for seniors, that really applies to, you know, say you've got some arthritic knees or hips or stuff like that. I can uh, put the pads on you. Yeah. <laughs> but I can put the pads on you and literally have you do body weight stuff, stuff that you would just be doing through your normal day, and I can make you work like you're working you know, lift, lifting, you know, 100 pounds as hard, as hard as you could go and literally just having to, you know, lift your body weight. So it's been kind of kind of fun to work with people and working on the strength and see some of the changes that they do. It's really, really, really cool. Wow, that's interesting. So yeah. that machine is really coming in. It is. It is, yeah. It's own. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, initially we start with it because usually when people come in, they're, they're dealing with pain, whether it's back pain or neck pain or, you know, shoulder, hip, knee, everywhere, you know. And many times in cases of seniors is from falling. Absolutely, absolutely. Because yeah. I, I know I, I have to be very careful yes. because I will not stand up by yeah. myself without yeah. having something close by to hold on to. Absolutely. Right. I've I've fallen before and I don't like it. Yeah, it's it's not good. So falling is I'm the worst thing that can happen, especially for a senior. You know, oh yeah. your bones are getting not as, as as dense as they used to be and they're more prone to fracture. That's right. You know, and that That's can very really, true. Be, really be a, a, a setback for you for sure. Yeah, I've yeah. so far that has not happened. Yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah. Oh, oh. And we do use the new weed for balance too. You know, we'll we'll map your, your legs if we're doing balance stuff and we figure out where the problems are where the muscles either aren't turning on or they're turned on too much and so maybe sometimes if your muscles are weak elsewhere your body will turn on muscles other places to try and create or compensate for that weakness um, and that's why a lot of times you know people will stretch their hamstrings over and over and over again and you know they 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 loosen up but then if you stop they tighten right back up well it's because you didn't fix the underlying problem usually there's some weakness elsewhere that the body is saying well that muscle's not working like it should be, so let me tighten this one up because that's going to create a little bit more stability. Um, and then we do different things. So once we find those spots, then we, we do balance tests and, or balance uh, exercises and stuff like right. that with the new beyond to give your brain that input to help with your balance. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I don't go anywhere unless I have my walker yeah. now. Yep. yep. Because I can push those brakes down. Right. 
and it's stationary, yeah. and I feel safer. Absolutely, absolutely. Walking around by myself, I absolutely won't do it anymore. Yeah. Well, it's and not I was, worth it. It's yeah. not worth falling and, and getting hurt. Absolutely. When I always talk to patients about, you know, when we balance, we actually use three different systems. So we use our vision. Which, what happens yes. when we get older, our vision gets worse. <laughs> really? We use our vestibular system, which is the medical term for basically your hearing. And what happens is we get older, our hearing gets worse. That's right. <laughs> and then we use proprioceptive input. So input through our joints and our hands and feet and stuff like that. And what happens with that? We get some arthrit arthritis in there. And so you start to lose some of those, you know, those, uh, those sensory inputs. Right. And so, you know, it's really a recipe as we get older to fall, you know, because... Those, all those systems start to deteriorate a little bit. But the really cool thing is is that we can actually stimulate those systems and make them work better if you work at it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so we do different things in the clinic where you know, sometimes maybe we're balancing and you're holding on with a finger or you know, maybe one hand or standing on one leg with one finger or something, that, a combination of that. Those are changing your inputs between your, your hands and your feet. Um, you know, and then we can do stuff with eyes open, eyes closed, or like we can do walking drills where you're literally, you know, turning your head left and right, and that replicates, you know, say you're walking down the street and you're talking to your son on the way in here. If your vestibular system's off, that will throw your balance off. And so we do different exercises to challenge that too. So you can definitely make the systems better, but you have to work at it. And that's that's where our expertise at Focus is, uh, is to come in and, and we figure those out and then we work on it. And then we have one therapist who does a lot of vestibular therapy, um, so that's her specialty. So she works a lot with balanced patients. Interesting. Yep. <laughs> now, how, how does this how does this work with chiropractic? Um, we we do a lot of the same things, and we like to work in conjunction. You know, when you find a good chiropractor, I love to work in conjunction with them because they have some really cool skills that we don't do in physical therapy, and vice versa. You know, and and I know for me, you know, chiropractic I think is changing a lot. You know, it used to be kind of a you know they call it the million dollar role and stuff like that. Yeah. It's really gotten away from that. We, yeah, we got so. Um, I appreciate your optimism, <laughs> um, uh, but you and I both know there's um, a functional portion of every profession, yeah. medicine, physical therapy, chiropractic, and then there's a symptomatic treatment yeah. portion of medicine, physical therapy, and chiropractic, and you and I are on the same page. Yeah. Absolutely. A functional approach. Absolutely. Um, anybody can chase symptoms. Yep. Um, and probably the best people at that are the medical profession. That's what their whole shtick is. Yes. Chasing symptoms and dealing with them in as expedient a fashion as possible, usually in an emergency setting, too. Yeah. But there's a big gap between that. You know, an emergency, a, a real medical emergency, and actually working right, being healthy, avoiding injury, avoiding illness. Yeah. And that's where people like us, yeah. functional people, are most effective. Unfortunately, all the messages we get in every form of media is all about the emergency. Yeah. And then it's reinforced that everybody who's not just dealing with an emergency is some kind of quack. Yeah. And you know, it's almost a stigma to put yourself out there and say, well, you know, it's not just about um, a surgical emergency situation. Yeah. You could avoid it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so much better to not get sick or injured in the first place. And then there are people, I taught at two colleges, the two colleges, and the last one was much more of the physical, the um, treatment management mm -hmm. instead of the the wellness uh, uh, um, idea concept. So there were professors at that school who I brought this up to yeah. because they're my colleagues. You know, we're forming the new doctors that are going out there, and I brought this up, and they they. They like 
beaten down. <laughs> like, 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 seriously, they don't want any part of this. And I'm like, that's a little disturbing. Like, you're not even open to the concept of prevention? Oh, I think it's huge. Uh, it's actually one of my kind of pet peeves because, you know, I think I think if you look at the dental industry, I mean, what do we do? We go, I was just at my dentist yesterday. We go every six months, you know, to get your teeth cleaned and, and preventative maintenance, you know, to do all that type of stuff. And I really wish that 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 model would be carried over to some of these other Everything. fields such as exactly chiropractic and physical therapy and, and science yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, everything. because i mean you think about i mean our biggest cost to our country is our health care yep. and it's getting worse and worse and worse yep. and and if we were more preventative you know come in every you know once a year for a checkup hey you know what these muscles are tight these muscles are weak you know do this home exercise program stuff and do that more prevention i think you would avoid a lot of things and especially for seniors you know having that checkup and saying oh you know what we're doing a couple tests here your balance is a little off you're at more risk for fall you know and, and that cascade you fall you break a hip you get pneumonia you know and all these that's things what happens because your bones are weaker mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're you're older you yep. don't have the the wherewithal mm -hmm. to go taking off down the hall with right. a run Especially when it's important, when you get out of bed and you have to go to the bathroom yes. and it's dark and that's where a lot of these, like life changing and unfortunately, let's face it, life ending situations so true. take place. Yeah. That's why I, I roll over, put my feet down, hold on to my side table, then I put my hand over onto the other <laughs> chest of drawers, and I pull myself up. Mm -hmm. And I have something to hold on to that I can prevent myself from falling. Right. And then I'll put my hand on the wall and on the, the uh, door jamb, and then onto the sink. And I'm, I feel safe. Yeah. But it, it is. It's it's frightening because it's dark. Right. But you, you've got a system, but but it sounds like your balance could use some work so that you didn't have to make sure you're touching all these different things and you know putting you know your your body your brain is obviously thinking that hey I need these inputs I need the input from that dresser from on my hand I need the input on the wall you know I need all that input well that tells me your your systems may be off a little bit and that's something that definitely you know can be addressed and work on and make yes. it better for yes. sure you know because you you don't want to I mean think about it like you know if you go out of your car and you're gonna say you know walk into Costco but you're you know 300 400 feet away well you don't want to be having to grab for stuff as you get in there you want to make sure that your balance is is, is is good and that it does okay and if it's not that's why we add a cane because a cane uh, you know makes your hand an extension to the ground it gives you another po point of income import, yeah, see, input. well I've, n I've never used a cane yeah. i've always used the walker yep. because it's been more stable for right. me absolutely well with your walker you've got two points of contact because yes. you've got both hands that's right so but you know using a walker can be a challenge say you're at home and say you know you make a meal well if you got the washer how are you getting that plate over to your kitchen table well fortunately i have a son and a daughter who <laughs> take turns staying with me uh -huh. which which helps a great deal yeah. it really does yeah. because even my son said mom slow down because yep. i still have a tendency to run up on the, off the chair and on my walk and down i go yeah. slow down mom slow <laughs> down <laughs> I hear that every single yep. time. Yep. <laughs> yep. The slower you go, the more you know, the more you're controlled, and you, that's, it's, that's it's easier. Right. But because that's the faster right. you're going, if you get out of control, and if you get, you know, moving pretty you, quick with that walker that's and right. it's out in front of you instead of up around you, that's it, right. yeah, there's a tendency to let it go. So yeah, it's absolutely important. Makes a difference. <laughs> so Adam, parting words of wisdom from Focus Physical Therapy. Um, you know, I guess. Come, come see us and uh, let us help you out, you know. Uh, uh, that's one of the f one, most wonderful things I love to do in my evaluation. You know, I bring somebody back and I sit down and I literally, you know, put my computer, uh, you know, off to the side and with just an open posture and say, what is it that I can help you with today, you know, and what, what are the issues you're having? And, and then as we talk about what our goals are, you know, because I can set goals, you know, easily. 
but you know for me I always want to set the goals that that person is wanting to they're coming to me to help them with maybe it's a functional activity or return to a sport or return to a leisure activity you know and I want to know that if there's something you're avoiding you know what what can we do and that's that's what we practice at focus our focus that's why we call it focus is focused on patient care so I guess that would be well, my takeaway we, we need to take a short break and we'll finish up when we come back absolutely I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host Dr. Thomas Pilecki on your hometown station 98.1 FM AM 1220 KHTS. Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Darkness Balucky, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM, AM 1220 KHTS. And we're speaking with Adam Laraway of Focus Physical Therapy. And you and Dr. Pilecki were having an interesting conversation that I was kind of hearing and not hearing. So <laughs> well, the best stuff happens on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just discussing a few things, but I want to focus on uh, Adam and the work he's doing there upstairs. <laughs> I, I, for those of you who don't know, we're uh, essentially roommates. <laughs> he's in the same building as I am just upstairs from downstairs and he's upstairs yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um but what's interesting is that you know there's all these artificial divisions out there right now and uh, um, on social media in politics um, the media can't lay off of trying to split the nation in half for whatever reason i'm not going to get into that right now but there's always been this artificial division between uh, conventional medicine physical therapists and chiropractors mm -hmm. But the division isn't what school you went to. It isn't what degree or what's even in your little black bag, your, you, you, what you have to offer the patient. The real division is, are you there to get that person functioning better, or are you there to placate them and make them feel better even though you're not really getting them better. Right. That is the real division yeah. out there. And um, the scary thing is that m most physical therapists, as far as I know, I mean, you can, you're the expert, mm -hmm. but definitely most chiropractors and, and most medical doctors are just about the quick solution to the immediate symptom or emergency. Right. Yes? Yep. Would you agree with that? Yep. And Adam and I are of uh, the, the, the other side of the tracks, and we, that's why we can work together. And yeah. Dr. Dornio as well is, is an amazing medical physician who supports us. Yeah. Who, is, who thinks the same way about getting the patient better, not just treating that immediate symptom, but talking to them about their nutrition, their recovery, their exercise habits, their hydration, and not just about the immediate symptom that presents. Right. And I'm sorry I took all your time, but go ahead. No, you're good. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, a few more yeah, parting wisdom, Adam, please. Well, I guess just kind of like what I said before, you know, at Focus, we are really focused on patient care. You're seeing the therapist every single time. Uh, I've got three other professionals besides myself. We're all skilled in the newbie, um, which is really uh, kind of our, our biggest treatment. We use it probably on 99% of, of our patients. Well, when you say newbie, is, yes. is that a monstrous machine? No, no, no. Or is it something that's say computer size or it's yeah it's probably it. about the size of a, of a like a computer uh hard drive you know it's it's i don't know it's probably 14 by inches by 14 inches we have them okay. on carts and uh and and then we kind of have our own workstation so we see you know our, our two patients that are going usually we're working with one while the other one's finishing up their treatment oh yeah. okay yep so and then we've we've uh yeah so we're, we use that and we map people up and figure out what's going on get to the heart of their problem and and uh, get them uh, back to doing what they want to do. So is this a, a five minute treatment, a oh, no. 10 minute treatment, 30 no. minute treatment, or? Uh, they're with us for about an hour. An yeah. hour, yeah. okay. So the first visit is our evaluation, it's one on one, completely trying to figure out what's going on. Um, and then the next, uh, the next visit is more treatment, um, once we've kind of figured out what's going on. Um, and again, they're with us for an hour, so yeah. 
newbie. The newbie, yep. Yep, check it out. And uh, the website is uh, newfit, so it's N-E-U dot F-I-T, which is a cool place to kind of see some of the success stories. Um, and it's also on our website as well at Focus Physical Therapy uh, PTSCV dot com. Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Yep. All right. Well, we, we still have a couple more minutes to talk. Okay. So, uh, Adam, give us your contact information, please. Uh, we are located at um, 25050 Peachland Avenue, Suite 205, uh, off of Lyons. And uh, our phone number is 661-255-4205. And our, uh, like I said, our website is uh, www.focusptscv.com. Focus uh, what? Focus PT. PT. SCV for Santa Clarita Valley. SCV. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. You can also use Focus Physical Therapy if you want to spell it out, but we have both websites, so they're, they link to the same same one. www.focusptscv.com. <laughs> and the phone number is 661-255-4205. Absolutely. And you're at 25050 Peachland Avenue, Suite 204. Perfect. Wow. 204. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. 205. Okay. I, I looked at it and I saw the five. Where did the four <laughs> come on? I heard 205 too in my brain. Well, I guess that's what happens as you get old. <laughs> Your so mind kind of goes left and right and upside down and downside up. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're changing the name of the show to The Senior Moment. There's a lot of that going on today. Uh, but it, we're, we, our guest in this the past uh, 20 minutes has been Adam Lowry, Focus Physical Therapy, um, of Functional Rehabilitation, which is, uh, I believe, the most powerful tool in all of medicine out there. Um, you don't wait for it to get sick or injured because um, it's always going to be the most um, expensive and ineffective way to deal with any situation. So we're both on the same page with that. Uh, you've been listening to the Senior Hour, KHTS 98.1 FM, AM 1220, your hometown station. We are sponsored by Comfort Keepers, Hestia Med Spa, and Providence Holy Cross. Now go out and enhance your quality of life. Thank you.